This lesson is about how to make chord melodies, playing chords and melody together at the same time on the guitar. We're gonna simplify a very deep and challenging subject here, and I'm gonna give you the three-step process that it takes to start making your own chord melodies on the guitar. I'm Jared from soundguitarlessons.com. I'm here to help you get full creative control over the guitar so you can sound great and know what you're doing at the same time. This is just an introductory lesson into chord melodies, but it's everything you need to get started. So let's go ahead and define chord melodies first. Chord melody is mostly a guitar term, and it means that we're playing the melody and the chords at the same time, but kind of in a specific way where often the chords are kind of following along and playing in parallel to the melody. This is slightly different than arranging for solo guitar, but it's a great stepping stone for getting there. In solo guitar, we are arranging the melody and the harmony and the bass parts and playing them all together at once. With chord melodies, we are leaving the bass part out. We are just harmonizing the melody with that inner harmony part with whatever notes fit within the chord. And again, we are often following the melody along with sometimes different chord shapes every time there's a different melody note. And you'll see what I mean as we work through this. So even though chord melodies aren't quite the same as a solo guitar arrangement, they still sound fantastic just all by themselves and they can easily be used and or adapted to become solo guitar arrangements. Chord melodies are often thought of as just a jazz guitar thing, but they don't have to be. So I'm gonna show you one example where we're going to create a chord melody from just a classic tune that everybody knows. And then we're going to also create a chord melody with the same three steps from a classic and standard jazz tune. We're just gonna scratch the surface here, but chord melodies and arranging for the guitar are both topics that I will be returning to regularly on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those lessons. This topic can be so daunting, so what are the three steps that we need to make our own chord melodies? Well, step one is just that we need to know the melody and the chords. Pretty straightforward, that's what we think of as just knowing a song. We need to know the melody and we need to know the chords. That's step one. Step two is that we need to map out the melody somewhere along the upper strings of the guitar. So along a single string, the top string, or the second string, or the top three strings. So we have room to fill in the harmony underneath. Part of this step is when we maybe wanna change the key and figure out what key uh, the whole range of the melody fits nicely in by going along some of the top strings. Um, I often recommend finding the entire melody, if you can, along one string, and then working out chord shapes under that, which we're gonna do here in a second, and then switching string sets later for finding the easiest way to play it. And step three is the actual hard part, the real work here, is we wanna find the closest chord voicing that we can to every single instance of the melody, every single note of the melody. We wanna find what is our closest chord voicing that we can find that is the appropriate chord that needs to be used during that part of the song. These chord shapes that we find will often be inversions, which means that the root is not the lowest note. We just wanna find whatever we can to fill in the notes of the chord. And like I said, we wanna fill in those notes below the melody. Depending on where you're at with knowing your theory, having the kind of your scales mapped out, arpeggios, chord tones, stuff like that, having the, the fretboard knowledge, depending on where you're at with that, this phase of finding the right chords can be a considerable amount of work. If you know some of that stuff, it makes it go much, much faster. The chord theory series that this lesson is a part of that I've been doing for a while has tons of great information and tons of lessons that will help fill in that information for you, fill in that knowledge for you. If you need to fill in some of those gaps, please check out the link in the description to the full playlist of the series. So those are the three steps. We just need to know the chords and the melody first, then we need to map out the melody on a single string, uh, the first string, second string, um, ideally, and then save the third string for if you need to go there for the range of the melody. And then uh, that third step is we need to find the closest chord shape, chord voicing that we can for every melody note um, moving along with the melody along that string. Uh, there are a few other details that we will get to as we go through the process, but now let's go ahead and put it to the test and show you some examples. The first chord melody that we are going to make is with the tune of Happy Birthday. So 
we do need to know the melody and the chords and just know what they are first. So you can see those on the screen here. We have the sheet music up, you have the chord progression and the melody written out. Step two is finding the melody somewhere along one of the top strings. So I have, if you see the tab there already, I have the melody uh, mapped out along the second string of the guitar. So that's gonna be like this. <laughs> And step three, the actual hard work here. Let's see if we can support every single one of those melody notes with a chord shape of the appropriate chord. So what I'm gonna do here is, because we're harmonizing with mostly triads, um, and we have a couple seventh chords there, but I'm gonna harmonize this with just three notes total, and I'm gonna have the supporting notes always be on strings three and four. The melody note is gonna be on string two, and the supporting notes of the harmony are gonna be on strings three and four. So this means that our chord melody the actual chord shapes sometimes when you include the melody won't always be a complete chord. So that melody note is either gonna be a chord tone filling in the chord or it's going to be a note that is replacing a chord tone because it's surrounding the chord in some kind of way. This is the way I prefer to do it. I think it's a cleaner sound, makes it easier to play. I don't like doubling notes and having kind of more notes in underneath. So uh, you'll see what I mean as we map it out here. So these two pickup notes, we're not gonna harmonize, harmonize at all, just because they are pickup notes, and so we're just gonna start when the actual chord progression comes in. So this first chord here um, is uh, supposed to be G, so I'm thinking of this chord shape. One, three, five, and the melody note is replacing the five. So that's what I'm talking about with how it's not a complete chord sometimes, but we get this sound. Okay, so it fills in the chord where it needs to. Um, usually if melody notes are around chord tones, they are going to resolve or use those chord tones at some point. So it's gonna sound really appropriate, like a full sound. So we have. Good, now the melody goes up to here and the chord is still G. So I need to find a chord shape that is a G chord on these two strings with this note. Happens to be this chord shape here. So what you'll find, and there, there are many ways to work on this, but what you'll find is that if you know your inversion shapes along the strings that you're working on, that makes things significantly easier. I can see that that's a G shape, this is a G shape, this is a G shape. We're gonna end up using all of those uh, triad shapes. So right now we have. Good, and now the chord is gonna change to D and the melody is gonna go here and I can see that there's a D chord shape here. Now, of course, when you do this, you might wanna to need to or want to take a lot of time to really think through it. I'm gonna go through pretty quickly just to say, I see the chord shape here and we're mapping it out there. Okay, so there's uh, the D chord shape that we have there. Now we're still on D and that melodic uh, statement happens again. So now I have to make a D shape over here. Okay, for that same statement and this is a D chord shape where kind of that's the root if you think of it as a C form in the cage system. But I'm playing with just the top three notes of that. Cool, and then I need to go, okay, here's a D shape here. And then, I'm, and then I resolve down to this note and I need to find a G shape. So you can see how knowing those shapes along the strings is gonna make it all, all the difference in the world. Um, now, I have that uh, note again with a G, and then it's gonna go up here to a G7 chord. Okay, so there's a G triad, that same shape that we did before, but I'm gonna make it a dominant seventh chord by including the closest flat seven that I can find. Okay, and then the melody is, okay, so what's my G shape off of this? And then how do I add the closest flat seven I can find? That's the sound I want, okay. What's the G shape here? And then I want to add a flat seven. So it's that sound, so we're gonna get. Okay, and now, sounds unresolved there, because that's our, our uh, G7 chord. Uh, so now it's going to a C chord with this as the, note, as the melody note, and going down. So we're actually gonna be finding this C chord shape, and have this dissonant kind of resolution for a sec. Dissonance to the resolution. Okay, so it's all coming together. I'll play it for you all at once in a second here. And then we have the C chord up here. We're using a lot of these same shapes, the same triad shape we used on both D and G, we're now using on C. Okay, 
we resolve to G for that uh, melody note, and then to G here, and then D, but I'm gonna add the flat seven to get that sound that we want, uh, that is written in the chord sheet. Okay, there's the whole arrangement there. Okay, let's hear the whole thing through, see how it sounds. So it works pretty well. Kind of cool how it's just the chords are just following the melody along in the same three strings. This can be thought of as definitely just a starting point. I often will map out a melody in this way, create a chord melody this way, and then uh, adapt from there. I'll start to make changes based on just what sounds best, but very often based on what is gonna be easier to play as well. So we're kind of mapping out everything. I often call this the clunky version. So I make the clunky version, and then I'll remove some of the harmonization so some of the melody notes are by themselves or change where I play the harmony versus the melody. And you know, for example, in this arrangement, this, this chord down here, this melody note that goes all the way up to here, it's gonna be pretty impossible to get that smooth at any sort of tempo that's not extremely slow um, and it's just cumbersome so I might just play that melody note right here and then jump to the chord so I'll make all kinds of changes and use that that clunky version of the chord melody where every single melody note has its own kind of chord like the way I wrote out the tabs and then from there make it a little more graceful just based on how I'd like it to feel. So this approach that we just did works for pretty much any song that is harmonized with mostly triads. So pop songs, for example, um, if I harmonize the song Let It Be in the same exact way, we create a chord melody on those three strings where the melody's on the second string, the harmony is on strings two and three, and we'll do it in the same exact key. If I use the song Let It Be by the Beatles, it'll sound like this. Like I said, chord melodies are often thought of as being used in a jazz guitar context. So let's arrange the first phrase of a jazz standard. I'm gonna use the jazz standard blue bassa, and we're gonna arrange with a chord melody the first phrase. So we need to find, just figure out the chords and melody first. So we got those. And then I'm gonna find the melody along the top string. And step three, let's map out the chords that support that melody moving along that top string. For jazz tunes or for anything using four note chords and, and seventh chords, um, I'll create a, a chord melody that has a total of four notes per chord. Just like when we were, when we were harmonizing with triads, that we had a total of three notes, we're gonna have a total of four notes. One important aspect about arranging chord melodies in a jazz context is that we want to, as much as possible, make sure that we are including the guide tones in the chord voicings that we're creating. So we wanna make sure that the three and the seven are in those chords. We can replace the, the root and the fifth with whatever else, but we wanna make sure that the three and the seven are always there as much as possible. So let's go through and map this out for a blue bassa. Here's that first uh, melody note. Uh, we have this one way down here, which for the end arrangement, when I kind of try to make it more graceful, I'll probably move that um, just right here or, or over here. But for that first note that comes in with the chord being harmonized is a C minor seven. And this right here, basically I'm thinking, okay, that note that is the melody is the fifth of the chord. What's an inversion voicing of C minor that has the fifth on the top? And that's this, flat three, flat seven, root and fifth. Okay, now the next melody note is just going down a whole step. I'm just gonna keep those supporting notes because the note that's moving is the five, that's fine. I have the three and the seven in the actual chord shape below, and that's great. Okay, now we have three. I'm gonna use this voicing that I love to use when flat three is on the top of a minor chord. That is root fourth, flat seven. I should say root 11, because it's like a minor 11 chord, flat seven and flat three. That's a stack of fourths. I did uh, my last video on quartal chords and stacked fourth chords. So definitely check that video out. I'm really proud of that one. Um, but that's that's a minor 11 voicing that harmonizes beautifully and is easy to jump to versus including a kind of a complete minor seven chord. So we have, okay, 
the melody keeps going. Now again, what's going on here is that if we know our inversion shapes of our chords along any string set, if we just get to say, oh, what's, where's the nearest inversion shape? Um, out of those four inversion shapes, where we have um, five on the top, flat seven on the top, root on the top, flat three on the top, back to five on the top, out of those four shapes along those four strings, which one is the closest to the melody that we can use? That also includes the three and the seven in it. And then, as you saw, I like to manipulate a little bit for the sound and for the ease of playing, uh, replacing the five with the four or something like that. So this is a beautiful voicing. It's a minor seven, uh, third inversion shape with the nine on the top because the melody, and then that moves down. So we have and we're just going through these voicings. This is a standard um, inversion shape of C minor seven. And then I'm gonna land on the flat three on the top of F minor seven. So just like with the happy birthday arrangement and with the triad shapes, we'll see that the same shapes are gonna come up over and over and over. Cause we'll just say, oh, this is a minor seven chord. And the melody that we need to harmonize is the flat three. So every time you're harmonizing a flat three of a minor seven chord, Every time the melody is that flat three, you can use that same shape every time. So it's pretty daunting at first, but it starts to um, become, there start to become some um, familiarities as we do it more. So here we have. Okay, and then I'm gonna jump up here. This is F minor seven. Oh, well that's exactly what we did here on C minor seven. We're doing the same thing on F minor seven. So F minor seven with nine to one as the melody, or C minor seven with nine to one as the melody, same thing, right? So pretty cool. Um, even if it takes you a long, long time to get your first couple arrangements worked out or kind of to be exploring some of this stuff, that's okay, let it take long. Embrace that it's hard. It's really enjoyable and worth it when we don't try to just get the result right away, in my opinion. So um, now we have, now we're gonna have D half diminished. Okay, that's just a root position voicing of D half diminished. Okay, now I'm specifically not gonna harmonize this note. Um, I already kind of planned that out because, and that's how I wrote it in the tabs, because it's actually just not a chord tone of that chord. It's very much a passing chord, uh, passing note. And so I like to, when it makes sense, it's a very quick note. I'm just not gonna harmonize that. Um, here's just a straight up inversion shape of D half diminished. And then it's going to, um, G7, this melody note is a sharp nine though. Um, so I believe in the tab it's written as B flat, it should be written as A sharp for the sharp nine. So uh, just forgive that. Here's straight up a G7 inversion voicing and then I'm just gonna replace the root with sharp nine on the top. Okay, and then G7, same supporting underneath, flat nine on the top. And we resolve to a nice, C minor seven voicing with the five on the top. That's the same voicing that we started with at the beginning. And then we're gonna go up here to finish off the arrangement. I'll go through it really slowly. So we got. Again, that's kind of a starting point. So that chord melody is not at all easy to play. I think that could be played smoothly, but it's really challenging. And so during that process of kind of trying to refine it, I would explore ways to be able to play it um, without it being so difficult to pull off, including maybe taking some of those exact chord shapes and moving them to different string sets. So we're crossing strings, uh, but still using the linear way along one string to initially map it out, I find really helpful. For more, check out my video on making a chord melody arrangement of the famous song, Fly Me to the Moon. Also, you can get free sheet music and tabs of that exact arrangement, as well as a solo guitar arrangement of Happy Birthday, just by clicking the link in the description. That's it for this lesson. Make sure you watch the other videos in this series. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care.